Janet Daly, representing Australia, comes from Brisbane, which I dare say is a lot warmer than it is in Nagano at the moment. Goes in this first heat of the women's 1,000 metres. Nine laps, nine circuits, each measuring just over 110 metres. And Toshigawara of Japan it is who goes into first place. Followed by Canclini of Italy. Then Erin Gleason of the United States. Just two skaters to qualify for the quarterfinals. Coming round with seven laps to go. Toshigawara leads. A very steady pace at the moment. Canclini in second, Erin Gleason in third, and Jenna Daly just uh, off the back of the pack at the moment, tracking every move the other three skaters make. Well, I thought to to Shigawara there was just going to pick up the pace a little, but uh, slowing it down again. They're lapping it around about 11 seconds. Now they're beginning to motor a bit more. Canclini goes in the lead. Oh! And Janet Daly is gone. Oh, my goodness, that's disappointing. Canclini leads to Shigawara. Three laps to go. Erin Gleason of the USA. Three metres adrift at the moment. It looks as though the Italian and the Japanese skater are looking good for the quarterfinal. Janet Daly, incidentally, up on her feet and skating. She's not heard. They'll hear the bell this time. Marinella Canclina. To Shigewara gets a huge roar from the crowd. Canclini will qualify quite easily. To Shigewara comes and takes it on the line. And Erin Gleason, a distant third, as To Shigewara gives the thumbs up. She's through to the quarterfinal easily. Well, it didn't appear as though there was any contact there. Indeed, there wasn't. It was Janet Daly who just lost the edge of the blade on the ice. Two now and Yang Yang of China right on the inside just hanging back and uh, coming into contact already with Azawa of Japan. Vlaeva of Bulgaria, number four, who goes into the lead. Just behind her, Erin Porter wearing 48 on her helmet from the United States of America. Erin Porter is absolutely tiny in comparison to Daniela Vlaeva of Bulgaria. And as expected, the pace is very slow, but uh, an Olympic record having been set in the last heat after a slow early pace by Ikura Toshigawara of Japan. Prompts her teammate, Saki Ozawa, to go into the lead with Erin Porter now in second place. Five laps to go in heat two of the women's thousand meters. Ozawa inspired by the exploits of Toshigawara in the previous heat as Erin Bordick tries to go through on the inside. She'll have to be a little careful of that. That's the sort of manoeuvre that got Nikki Gooch disqualified in 1994 in Lillehammer. Coming tight on the curve. So Erin Porter leads. Two laps to go from Yang Yang. The Chinese skater moves through the same manoeuvre as Erin Porter put over her on the last lap. Now they take the bell, just two to qualify. The Japanese skater coming through in front of Erin Porter. It was a clean manoeuvre and Porter's gone. Oh. Yang Yang first, Ozawa second. Erin Porter may, but just may, have uh, a little bit of a word with the referee about that last bend. But at the moment, it's China and Japan who go through to the quarterfinal. Well, it was the diminutive Ozawa who just nipped in front of Erin Porter. Then coming round the final bend, I think perhaps Erin Porter just trying to do too much. Just three skaters take the line in the third heat of the women's 1,000 meters and uh, straight into the lead. Katia Colturi from Italy being followed by the skater who was disqualified in the final of the 500 meters. The world record holder, Isabel Chere of Canada. And then Shikaji Tanaka of Japan. Well, already the Olympic record has been broken twice here after very slow starts. 
And just as her predecessors, her teammates did before her, Azawa and Tashigawara. Tanaka goes into the lead to try and pick up the pace a little bit. Just under six laps to go in the third heat. Isabel Charest there looking tremendous in the 500 meters until, what, the last couple of laps of the final where she got involved in a tussle and was disqualified. She certainly looked set for a medal. When she wants to turn on the power, she can put meters between herself and the rest. Three and a half laps to go in heat three. Charest leads for Canada. Japan in second place with Tanaka. Katja Kolchuri of Italy, a couple of meters behind the Japanese skater. She really is a powerful skater, Isabel Charest. Sixth in this event four years ago. She's won Olympic medals since 1992, since the introduction of this sport into the Olympic Winter Games. On the final lap, the Italian is coming back. Isabel Charest and Tanaka off the band. The Italian trying to get through, but the Canadian wins it. Tanaka in second place. And Katia Colturi of Italy is eliminated. The slowest time so far, 139.73. Kim Yan Mai right on the outside in heat four of the women's thousand meters. And immediately into the lead goes the Olympic champion of 1998, Annie Perot of Canada. She's been followed by Marina Pilaeva of Russia and uh, the Italian, Mara Obani, coming through into the lead, wearing the all blue suit. Canada in second place, Russia in third. And the Korean, who, like her teammates, has prepared so well for these Olympic Winter Games. Wearing number 21, going around the outside, the Italian coming through on the inside, number 25 on her helmet. Six laps to go in heat four of the women's thousand meters. Kim of Korea leads. Annie Perot, the Olympic, the new Olympic champion over 500 meters in second. Oh, this is a real tussle in heat four. All of these skaters in contention, and it's speeding up now. Korea lead, Canada second, Italy third, Russia four. Three laps to go this time. Kim of Korea being closely shadowed by Annie Perot of Canada. The Canadians have come here well prepared too. Italy, Urbani in third place. And the Russian, Marina Pilaeva, in a difficult position right at the back of the field. They'll hear the bell this time. Just two to go through to the quarterfinals. Kim from Annie Perot. The first two. I don't know how the Italian's going to get through. Maybe try on the inside. No, she doesn't. Kim, quite easily then, eases down into first place. Annie Perot of Canada in second. 139-0 for the time. Annie Perot surprised a lot of people winning the 500 meters a couple of nights ago, but obviously in good form, along with her teammate, Isabel Charest, the world record holder for the 500, who went through in the previous heat. But Kim, the Korean, in great shape in heat four. Heat five and on the outside, Wang Chun Lu of China, who didn't finish in the 500 meters two nights ago so uh, that was the final she didn't get a medal and so it was awarded to, to the winner of the b final so a very interesting uh, situation ensuing there but anyway in heat five in the lead anka yanni landman of the netherlands the orange top there very distinctive of the netherlands skaters wearing number 33 in second place the chinese skater wang in better shape than she was in the final of the 500 meters the other evening in third place from the People's Republic of Korea, Han Ryon Hyu. And right at uh, the back there, from the United States, Amy Peterson, one of the most experienced skaters in this Olympic tournament. She finished third in this event at the American back in 1992 and has had two relay medals. Three and a half laps to go. 
Landman from the Netherlands leads. The Chinese skater Wang in second place, coming through to take the lead. No, she doesn't. She gets pushed back into second. The American Amy Peterson in third, and she's gone. Landman from the Netherlands has gone right on the crown of the bend. So the race is on now for the two qualifiers, and it's Amy Peterson of the USA who takes advantage. They take the bell now, and look at the difference. There's meters between Amy Peterson and Wang of China in second place. Han will be skated out of it. 133.53, it's pretty fast, but a bit of drama there in heat five. And Amy Peterson just bided her time and timed it perfectly in the end. Amy Peterson, well, we were saying that she is a very experienced skater. She knew exactly what she was doing. And uh, when Anka Yanni Landman went off the crown of the bend. Just being cut up a little bit there by Wang. She was taken out. I wonder if there'll be an objection by the Netherlands team management. Wang it is. She had misfortune in the final of the 500. This time, it's Landman's turn. Well, I think the thumbs up sign there from Wilf O'Reilly means that Landman will probably be reinstated into the quarterfinals. There could be a disqualification, and it could be Wang. He's on the left-hand side of the picture there, sitting next to Amy Peterson, who won that heat. And it's just come up that Landman, in fact, has been reinstated because of that clash with Wang. Wang is disqualified, so three qualifiers for the quarterfinal the from that for race. Peterson of the, the USA, Han, who might count herself a little bit lucky, and Landman Lady of the Peterson Netherlands. The He's six now on the inside. Peterson Ellen Hendrika Vegas of the Netherlands, who goes straight into the lead. I'm quite relieved to see her training partner and friend, Landman, be reinstated into the quarterfinals after clashing with Wang of China in the last heat. So at the moment, number 35, Vegas leads. In second place is the Russian, Tikhonina. And in third place, just easing in behind the Russian, the German skater, Suzanne Bush, and right at the back, Another Yang Yang, we've got two in these championships and we've come to know them as Yang Yang A, who is skating here, and Yang Yang S, who went in heat two and broke the Olympic record. Five and a half laps to go, German lead with Suzanne Busch, Netherlands in second place, Vegas. In third place, Yang Yang from China, and then Tikhonina from Russia. The pace picking up all the time now. Four laps to go, the Netherlands leads, China in second, Germany third, Russia fourth. And what fantastic success the Netherlands have had in long track speed skating. They've yet to achieve that level of success in short track, but they're working hard at it. Two laps to go, just two qualifiers, and at the moment it looks as though Ellen Hendrika Vegas and Yang Yang of China have done enough to go through with ease. They take the bell. I don't think there's anything Suzanne Bush and Tikhonina of Russia can do about the lead that Yang Yang's got now. Vegas in second place looks safe as well. China qualify along with the Netherlands in heat six. The defending champion, Chun Li Kyung of Korea, goes in heat seven and has decided already just to drop right back into fourth place, wearing number 28. And at the moment, Jong Ok Myong from the People's Republic of Korea. Tanya Vicent of Canada in second place, just easing into the lead, number 10. In third place at the moment, Evgenia Radanova of Bulgaria. It looks very, very gentle, doesn't it, as they glide across the ice, but as soon as they turn up the afterburners and go into top gear. Well, the speed is absolutely marvelous to watch, but that is when accidents can occur as well. And here goes the defending champion. Very disappointed, just getting a bronze medal in the 500 meters, was Chun Li Kyung in the lead. But that bronze medal came from a B final because there were only two finishers in the A final, and look at that. Penny Vicent goes way, way off the back there. She didn't skate that bottom bend very well at all. 
And a chance for Radanova of Bulgaria, who's now being chased by the defending champion, Chan of Korea. Two and a half laps to go in heat seven. A surprise leader, Radanova. The Canadian is trying to come back to the rest, but I fear she's got too much to do now. Just one and a half laps to go. The defending champion eases past Radanova of Bulgaria as they hit the bell. Two qualifiers very comfortably indeed. Chun just dragging Radanova around with her. Good skate by the Bulgarian. And Tanya Vicent very disappointed with her third place. And in fourth place is John. Well, Tanya Vicent of Canada was pushed way out wide there, and that's what upset her rhythm, upset her balance, and she couldn't get back into the race. Number 39 of Myojun of the People's Republic of Korea has been disqualified. Well, an unusual decision, not one I pretend to understand. John has, in fact, been disqualified, but Tanya Vicent has not been reinstated into the quarterfinal. The final heat of the women's 1,000 meters, one of Korea, Kunza of Germany, Svechkova of the Ukraine, and Ho of the People's Republic of Korea. And she is in second place at the moment, wearing number 37 on her helmet. The German in the lead, Yvonne Kunza wearing 19. And 43, Svechkova, and the Korean wearing number 31, Hai Kyung. One of a brilliant trio of Korean skaters in this women's 1,000 just cruising around at the back. Oh, even at that speed, the German Kunze almost uh, having a little collision there with Svechkova, and Ho goes through into the lead for the first time. Coming around with six laps to go, but here goes the Korean one. She's having none of this early slow pace. She wants to just speed it up a wee bit. Much, much less than even a training run, this. So number 31 is in the lead. Ho from the People's Republic of Korea in second. Svechkova of the Ukraine in third. The German Kunze just going a little bit wide there in fourth place. Three and a half laps to go. Just over 300 meters. Korea from the People's Republic of Korea. From the Ukraine from Germany. Now it's going to get interesting. There's just two to qualify. Kunze trying to come through on the inside. She pushes the Ukrainian out wide. And that has meant that Ho and Wan have got away. There's a five-meter gap now between those two and Kunze of Germany. I think the leader, Wan, can afford to ease down just a little bit. Wan and Ho are going to comfortably qualify easily in this final heat. There we go. It's 1.44, the slowest heat we've had from the eight heats in this first round of the women's 1,000 meters. Wan of Korea joins her teammates in the quarterfinals along with Ho from the People's Republic. Well, there was only a couple of meters between all four skaters before Kunza tried to come through on the inside on Svechkova of the Ukraine, and that was what made the big difference. That allowed Wan and Ho to get away and qualify easily in this last heat. That's a list of all the qualifiers for the quarterfinal, led by Amy Peterson of the United States. All three Koreans have made it safely through. Two Canadians as well. Isabel Charest, the world record holder for the 500 meters, who was disqualified in the final of that distance. And there we have the other two Japanese qualifiers. So no surprises there, the main contenders going through, Jamie, and the Olympic record going so many times, I suppose that's not a surprise either. Yeah, they, they are, they've really uh, improved on the 1,000 metres, the ladies. They're, uh, they're skating rather well. They've, I think they broke it six times mm -hmm. in, the, in the opening rounds, which uh, whether that will be a good thing for some of the qualifiers to go on to in, in, into later rounds um, will remain to be seen, really. In the ladies' event that was completed on Thursday, um, Annie Perot won the 
the gold. Yeah. But her teammate, Isabelle Charest, was unlucky in that final. A chance for sort of revenge here? Yeah, uh, Isabelle was very unlucky, I thought. Um, a bad tactical move in the final. Uh, very uncharacteristic of her. Uh, and hopefully she'll be able to put, put this right uh, in the 1,000 metres. She looked very, very comfortable in her qualifying round. A very slow yeah. time. Uh, in comparison to the other rounds, so hopefully she'll be feeling fresh and ready for the next rounds. Well, still a way to go. Uh, we'll have the quarterfinals of the 1000 uh, a little later. The next event, though, is the men's sprint, the 500 metres. Sadly, no British representative because because both Nikki Gooch and Matt Jasper um, didn't get through in the heats on Thursday, and uh, tremendous disappointment because they went there with such expectation of a medal. Yeah, um, I think we've dwelled on Nikki's preparation um, on the past and. Um, the, the first two weeks he was ill prior to the game starting, so that, that put pay really to his chances. Um, Matt in his race, uh, he got off to a bad start and he did uh, get beat by two good skaters, Lee Ya Young from China, who, who uh, got the silver in the 1,000 metre event, and Maurizio Carney in Italy, he was a very, very top sprinter, so a bit, bit, uh, bit unlucky, really. A bit unlucky, very disappointing that no British representative, but the quarterfinals took place today. We'll join the first of those now. Away we go, a real sprint for the first corner, and the Korean fell. Well, it's at the referee's discretion as to whether to call them back if one skater does fall before the first corner. It was obviously nothing any of the other skaters did. It's Uematsu of Japan who leads. What a pace to start this first quarter final. Fabio Carter moves into second, Mark Gagnon in third, very close to Carter, who's pushed out wide. Uematsu is getting in the way as well. Mark Gagnon almost barges his way through there. They'll hear the bell this time. There's nothing the Korean can do about it. Lee is about 10 metres back. Gagnon leads. Uematsu in second place. Carter in third. Carter trying to come through on the Japanese. He can't do it. 43-25. What a cracking start. The first quarter final of the 500 metres. And just after the gun went. Well... It was uh, Lee Jun Wan of Korea who faltered. That left three skaters. And ultimately, they were all led over the line by Mark Gagnon and Itoshi Uematsu of Japan. Just two skaters to go through to the semi-final. The Japanese skater there giving a little bow to the crowd. Watch the Korean on the outside. That was why the referee didn't call them back. It was the Korean's own fault. He slipped on the ice. It really is like the sprint start of an athletics 100-meter uh, race. In first place, number 109, Mark Gagnon of Canada. And in second place, number 150. Well, the Canadians have got a great track record in short track speed skating. 43.25 the time, outside of the Olympic record by just three tenths of a second. The second qualifier, Hitoshi Uematsu. Japanese have never won a gold medal in short track speed skating at the Olympic Games. Mark Gagnon confirmed with Uematsu as the two qualifiers, Carter and Lee, are eliminated. Well, certainly over the last couple of days of the short track speed skating program, we've seen a lot of fallers. And in these 500 meter races, as we see the lineup for the second quarterfinal, with the sprints so fast and furious, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see one or two skaters go down on the ice. That's at the start line there, and uh, those were some of the grooves made in the ice by Lee Jun Wan in the last heat as he fell. Well, this time it's Chai of Korea, Andrew Gable of the United States there, wearing number 147, and Yulong of China, right on the inside, and Francois Drolet of Canada. Chai of Korea, silver medalist in 94, and Andrew Gable, who finished fourth in the final of the 1,000 meters on the outside. Oh, and again a Canadian, just trying to get an advantage at the start, but uh, there's only about, well, it's less than 20 meters from the start line to the start of the first bend. That's why you need a good position. Away we go this time, I'm being called back once more. Francois Drolle there, hands on hips, just behind the Chinese skater, An Yulong. 
Then the Korean Chai. Line position three, four star. So that uh, was Chai of Korea who uh, was told by Franco Ridi, the starter. The getaway this time, Andrew Gable, big fella, driving with those arms to get to that bend first. He does it well. Andy Long in second place. Drole in third, the Korean off the back. Chai. Now things will start to get interesting. Coming up towards two laps to go, and the Canadian trying to go through on the inside, which he does well. There was a good gap there, but the Chinese uh, skater could come back at him. They'll hear the bell this time, just two to go through to the semi-final, Drolet, and Gable pushing on that corner, and Gable's being pushed out of it. It's Chai who's in third place at the moment. Anu Long of China is going to come through, and Drolet together of Canada, and Gable of the United States will be kicking himself. He looked in a good position, but eventually just had to go wide, and that was too much for the American. Francois Drolet, again, hands on hips, just uh, looking at the replay. Did he come into contact with Gable? Well, there may be an objection about that. Ken Pendry. One of the leading figures in refereeing and international skating from Great Britain will be looking at that very carefully indeed. That Anu Long of China. The time 43.37. And I think we do have a disqualification. We'll try and update that in just a moment. Francois Drolet, Canadian, and the Canadian team managers. And it looks as though Andrew Gable of the USA has been reinstated. This often happens in short track speed skating. Two automatic qualifiers. And uh, normally we just get four skaters in one race, of course. So in the semi-finals, we're certainly going to have at least five skaters in one semi-final. And Francois Drolet of Canada has been disqualified. The guy with a cap on. There's no need for me to tell you what he thinks about that decision. China and Korea go through automatically. And Andrew Gable of the USA is reinstated into the semi-final. That's the lineup for the third quarter-final. And uh, Francois Drelle's teammate, Eric Bedard of Canada, bronze medalist in the 1,000 meters, he goes third from the inside. Lai of China is there. Nishitani of Japan and Carnino of Italy. There's the Italian. Now, I wonder if we're going to have a mad dash to the first bend like we had in the last quarterfinal. They really do explode away from the line. Live China on the inside. Nishitani of Japan. Bedard of Canada. Carnino of Italy. Oh, <laughs> well, the Italian and perhaps Eric Bedard of Canada jumping the gun just a little bit. It's not so bad in the longer races, the 1,000 meters, which is the longest distance the individuals skate in the Olympic Games. They do skate anything up to 3,000 meters in other tournaments. Not so bad for those longer distances. Things are taking a little bit more uh, gently, but in the 500 meters, You've got to get into a good position from the gun. So the Olympic record that was set by Tarao of Japan, he goes in the last quarterfinal. 42.94 and uh, the Canadian, Eric Bedard, being told by the starter in no uncertain terms that it was him the last time. Away we go. Lie of China. Then Nishitani. Then the Canadian Bedard. Then Canino of Italy. They're not hanging about, are they? The angle on the ankle and the pressure on the ankle around those bends is absolutely incredible. Lie of China leads, coming up with two laps to go. Nishitani there, just touching 
the Chinese skater on the back just to ease him out of the way a little bit. Eric Bedard, who won that bronze medal in the thousand, he's got a bit of work to do if he's going to go through to the semi final. He's coming through on the inside of the Japanese skater. Look at this finish. China, Japan through comfortably, and in the end, the bronze medalist could not do it. Eric Bedard eliminated, as was Carnino of Italy. Lai of China looked comfortable. Nishitani there. He'll be smiling in a moment. There he goes. But uh, really, the Japanese skater almost came to grief with a little push as Eric Bedard of Canada tried to ease him out of the way and tried to go through on him. Cutting from the outside to the inside was the man in third place. Look at that. And all credit to Nishitani, stayed on his feet. And it's he, him, who goes through to the semi-final. And Lai of China setting a new Olympic record of 42.86 seconds. Tarao's record has gone. He goes in the last quarter-final. Forty two point nine eight. That's just outside the old Olympic record. The world record is forty two point six four. That stood for a couple of years. But uh, the way things are going, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we uh, we saw something approaching a new Olympic record in the later round. So Lai of China, Nishitani of Japan qualify Eric Bidard and the Italian Carnino are eliminated. The last quarter final, Kai Feng of China, Satoru Tarao. Now the former Olympic record holder, Dave Vashti, who uh, has an unofficial world record time pending. Set that uh, just a few weeks before the Olympic flame was lit here in Nagano. Coached by Wolf O'Reilly. And Kim Dong-sung of Korea is in this final heat. The Olympic champion over 1,000 meters. That's Dave Vashti. The Korean on the outside. I wonder if he'll drop to the back after the gun goes, like so many of the other Korean skaters have done before him. And the women, too, just to stay out of trouble for the first Go to the half a lap or so. An intriguing lineup for this last quarter final. Ready. Kai Feng of China on the inside. Here we go, and indeed, the Korean just dropping back. He's only 17 years old, but he won the 1,000 meters superbly. After becoming world champion last year, he's a couple of meters away from Dave Versteeg in third place. Kai Feng of China leads. Tarao of Japan goes into the lead. Oh, but he's gone! The Japanese just slipped, I think. We'll have to wait for the slow-motion replay to see whether there was any contact. So Dave Versteeg now of the Netherlands gets away. Kim Dong Sung of Korea in second place just from uh, Kai Feng of China. Dave Stieg is going to qualify for the semi finals comfortably. And Kim Dong Sung will as well. The new Olympic champion for the 1,000 meters. Kai Feng of China is run out of it. And Satoru Terao. It's all gone wrong for him. He's just skating over the line now. Dave Stieg, his time 43.37. So 4.5 of a second away from the Olympic record that was set in the last heat. And consolation cheers for the Japanese skater just crossing the line. Well, that's the young fella that everybody here is going to have to beat. Surely he must be the favorite to take this 500 meters, despite the fact he looked as though he was well beaten there by Dave Vestiga of the Netherlands, who just there is in third place but was there any contact i really don't know but you could see the, the look of anguish on Tarao's face in first place Dave Verste of the Netherlands in second place Don San Kim well from certainly Korea. the scoreboard is showing that Dave Versteeg of the Netherlands qualifies along with Kim of Korea and no sign of any disqualifications no sign of any objections by the Japanese bench the team management so it looks as though one of the favorites here in Nagano we'll take has been eliminated After this and will we'll not take part the in the semi-final Dave Stieg, we'll world record holder Kim the Olympic champion at 1000 meters
They go through to the semi-final. It's going to be an intriguing lineup in those two semi-finals later on. Well, Jamie Fern, I think from the start of those uh, quarter-finals there in the 500 metres, you could tell how intense the eventual battle for the medals is going to be. It's going to be fairly frantic, isn't it? Yeah, they're all skating very, very fast times. Um, there's not a lot between any of the skaters at the moment.